when you're ready. Yeah, perfect. Just started that. Excellent. That's great. So um, recording's back on. I will share the screen again and um, we will continue. So let's go back to this. <clears throat> Okay, so just uh, just check that's working for everyone. Okay. Yep, fine with me. Excellent, good stuff. So uh, we're now looking at a bit of downwind, which is probably the biggest difference between um, uh, between flat water sailing and then sailing with waves, because it completely changes the way you sail your boat. So um, in in supernovas, in lasers too in flatter water, you'd probably get yourself onto an angle. You'd never want to be sailing directly downwind. You'd get yourself onto a by the lee angle or a, a very deep reach angle. And you spend a bit of time sailing on that angle, trying to find the balance between um, sailing higher, more towards a reach for speed, and then sailing directly down downwind towards your, your leeward mark. However, when you add in waves, this all changes because you can surf on the waves and that can make a massive difference to your speed. So um, I'm just going to let that last bit play through. I'm just going to talk you through what's happening. So at the moment, I'm moving quite slowly here because I'm not surfing on the waves. So you can see I'm uh, changing my angles quite dramatically. So I'm sailing quite a hard by the lee angle here. And then having a look behind to see if I can find any waves. So I'm still sailing quite a hard by the lee angle. And then I go for quite a big luff up. So you could see the amount of degrees I turn. So that other boat has disappeared completely. And I'm now heading off. I'm pretty sure this is um, out of Haley Island. So that would be the Isle of Wight over there. So I'm now heading off towards the Isle of Wight. So I'm on quite an aggressive reach. So if I was sailing in flat water, I probably wouldn't be sailing such big angles. However, what I'm really desperate to do here is to get the boat up to speed. Because once the boat's up to speed, you can see we're moving a bit more quickly here. And once we're moving quickly, once when you put, point the bow of the boat down a wave, just like a surfer paddling to get himself started before he gets onto a wave, you need, to you need to have some speed before you can surf the wave. So you have a look at the angle here. So I'm trying to build speed. Have a look at the angle of my boat. I'm going in this direction, but I've got that wave trough in front of me, which I'm trying to put the bow into. I've now got the boat moving a bit more quickly and I'm starting to, to um, well, actually luff up because I'm sailing by the lee. So I'm going more directly downwind in this, this direction here, if that makes sense. Whereas when I slow down, I'm then moving to a more aggressive angle to build the speed again. So we're back up to speed here, back onto a, onto a reach because I want to build some pace. Trying to bear away again. I'm always just trying to find a trough that I can push the bow of the boat into. Yeah, probably been a bit too aggressive there, but never mind. Yeah, so I'll just let this play through a little bit more. So there we go. I've got the boat moving quickly now. So you might, you can see, I just started to move my weight back along the, along the side of the cockpit here. So when you're just trying to get your boat surfing, you have to think of your boat as a bit of a seesaw. So um, if the waves underneath it and your boat's balanced on top, you want the bow to start pointing downhill to start sliding down the wave. So you need to put your weight on the front of that seesaw. So for the majority of this, this video where we're sailing in fairly light winds, marginal surfing conditions, I'm trying to keep my weight quite far forwards Whereas now I've got myself up to speed, I'm pushing my weight back along the boat because um, I want, now I'm planing, I want to start to move my boat back. However, 
once the boat starts slowing down and it's uh, marginal whether I might catch waves or not, I'll then be putting my weight back forward on the front of the seesaw. So you can see I've, get, I've caught a wave here. I've got some serious speed. So I'm now taking that speed almost directly downwind. So the other boats disappeared and the Isle of Wight's nowhere in sight. I'm going directly downwind there. So I'm using all that time while I'm at high speed to go exactly directly downwind. Okay, I've now fallen off the wave. I'm now slowing down. My weight's gone back forwards. The Isle of Wight has appeared again because I'm starting to sail a more aggressive angle. There we go. So that's uh, that's the first aspect that I was wanting to bring out from this video. So um, does that make sense to everyone or does um, anyone have any questions about sailing angles or, or surfing waves? I, I don't, don't think in the supernova that, um, well, I certainly don't ever sail by the lee. Um, so I think you're, you're, for us, you're talking more about um, going to the reach to accelerate to catch the wave rather than sailing by the leak. I don't know if anybody else sails by a lee and so from the supernova, but um, if I do, it usually ends in disaster. It's it's a little bit more tricky to sail by the lee in in the supernova, um, particularly in in lighter winds because your your boom and your sails quite heavy, so it swings in plus the fact that you've got shrouds so you can't ease it out all the way. Uh, but certainly um, the couple of events I've done in, in a supernova, it is actually possible to sail by the lee. So um, a little trick that I got was um, if you loosen off your forestay a little bit, then when your, your boom moves out, if your that shrouds are slightly loose, it means your boom can go out a little bit further. I wouldn't say go too far because you don't want to, to break anything. But um, if you let your yeah, if you decrease your rig tension, your boom can actually push your shroud forwards and your boom will go out a little bit further than if you had tight rigging. Yeah, um, and think, then, sorry, again? I think it's more of a, a skill thing rather than actually being able to catch the boat on that point of sail on that on sailing by the lee and actually recognizing that as yeah. the point of sail. Um, yeah, I um, appreciate that the shrouds are looser, the, the boom goes further. But again, for me, it's that um, recognizing when I'm actually sailing by the lee is um, where I get lost, I think. Is the... OK, um, what what sort of problems do you have when you're when you're trying to get it, get it by the lee? Uh, falling in. Yeah, maybe. OK, uh, which way? Windward or leeward? Uh, so, you know, it's that when you're sailing by the lee, it's, it's the wrong way around, isn't it? So it powers up and tips you the way you wouldn't normally expect. And it's just catching that and recognising that point. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I think the big thing is when people sail by the lee, it's very easy to let your sail out too far. Because um, everything's essentially in reverse. So um, while you're sailing by the lee, if your sail's out too far, it's, um, it can make things very unstable. So it'd be just like sailing on a reach with your sail still in the center line. If you imagine everything the other way around, so that's quite a difficult explanation. So um, if you let your sail out too far by the lee, it's just like having it too far in when you're sailing on a reach. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Give you, give you a second to, to sort of let that one work out. So you don't want your sail to be at the point where it's going to jibe, but you want it fairly close to that because you want air to be moving across it in a sort of, in a continuous way. When things get very unstable is when you're sailing an angle such as a direct run and um, I'll try and show you on, on the screen here. Imagine if I was sailing on a direct run and the wind's just hitting the sail square on, it could exit to the right or it could exit to the left, which then makes your boat very unstable because the flow's switching around. Whereas if I'm sailing 
on a definite reach, the wind is consistently flowing from mast to the back of the sail. So that makes everything a bit more stable and predictable. Whereas when you're going by the lee, if you sail quite a, a fairly strong angle, so you make sure the wind is consistently flowing from the back of your sail to the mast, and you'd be able to tell that because your telltales will flow backwards and they will, will show you that the air is constantly streaming that way. That will be more stable than being in that in that in between point. Okay, so perhaps try and be a bit more positive with the angle. That's that, that's what you're saying, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I'd say if you can go sailing um, by yourself when you're not in a race, I think that would be probably a good piece of advice for everyone: is go sailing by yourself and um, try to to find find the limits to a certain extent. Um, for downwind sailing, for roll tacks in light winds, for example, find your limits when there's no pressure like you get in a race so you can actually get it wrong. And once you get it wrong, you know where the limit is. Whereas if you're continuously in a racing situation where you don't want to lose out, you never actually find the limit. So I would say go sailing on your own, set yourself up on a by the lee angle and just bear away further and further and further and find out what the point is where your sail actually jibes. And then what sort of telltale clues are, are attached to that? So what does your what does your rudder start telling you? What does your main sheet start telling you when you find that point? Yeah, so that that would be one big, big piece of advice for me as a as a, as a coach is go sailing by yourself and try stuff and get it wrong. So um, I was coaching this weekend up in. Um, uh, did, uh, where is it? Uh, Bartley in uh, in Birmingham, where I think they have quite a lot of supernovas actually, and we were doing some some tacking with some some sort of younger laser sailors. Uh, I you know and I was I was I'd give them a, a a thumbs up and a well done if they capsized trying to roll tack because I was saying well done guys you found the limit, which um, is something they probably wouldn't have done if they were in a racing scenario. They wouldn't have wanted to find the limits. So, uh, yeah, as a coach, go go sailing by yourself, find the limits, and um, get it wrong. Cool. So uh, we've we've looked at sailing angles. So, um, and um, I'll just quickly explain why. Is apart from it being more stable if you've got con air consistently flowing one way or the other across the sail, it's it's also faster because if you have airflow across your sail, you create a little bit of apparent wind. So um, we all remember the, I'm sure we all remember the America's Cup foiling boats and you know what sail angle they have when they're going down, when their boom is still in the middle of their boat because the apparent wind's basically coming from in front. They wouldn't be able to go that fast if they sailed directly downwind with their boom at 90 degrees because they'd only be able to move as fast as, as the wind speed takes them, minus the amount taken by drag. So um, they're able to sail that fast because they have flow over their sails. Whereas we, we can't go anything like that sort of speed and we don't have that sort of apparent wind, but you can use that effect of having flow across your sail to, to uh, help you go more quickly than you would do if you just use your sail as a block for the wind. So uh, always remember that down when you're trying to have flow across your sail one way or the other. It's more stable and it's quicker. So let's keep moving forwards from here. So um, we know we need to sail some angles downwind to uh, get some speed. When then once you're up to speed, you're trying to use that speed to take you directly downwind towards your mark. When you're losing speed, when you're slowing down, you then need to start saying angles again to once again build up your speed. So again, I'm moving quite quickly here, I'm on a wave. So what I'm gonna be looking at now is how you transition between those angles. So how you do what I call an upturn and a, down a downturn. So at this point here, sorry, back one second. At this point here, 
I'm on quite a high angle. I'm on quite a, quite a strong reach heading towards the other boat over there. And then what we're going to look at is the next few seconds as I'm bearing myself away. So I let my main sheet out a little bit too far, first of all, which makes the boat heel on top of me. And if the boat heels on top of me, it wants to bear away. So I then just let the rudder follow that turn. Then when I've reached my angle, I start to sheet in again, back to sort of my correct setting and the boat wants to go straight. And I'm then I'm not doing this very well. I think I'm, yeah, that was all rudder. That wasn't a, that wasn't body movement at all. So here we go, bearing away again, trying to make sure the boat's on top of me because when the boat's on top of me, it wants to bear away. There we go. Not looking very good here, just going fast. So there we go, sheeting out and letting the boat heel to bear away. And then in a second, I'm going to be heading up a little bit. So I'm letting the boat become more upright. I'm not doing a very good job of illustrating this. But my point is here, basically you want to, uh, there it is. When you want to luff up on the downwind, you don't want to lead with your rudder. And when you want to bear away, you don't want to lead with your rudder. You want to lead with the heel of your boat. So I want to luff up here go from a by the lead to a more of a reaching angle. So I've moved my weight into the boat to let the boat heel away from me. And then I'm letting the rudder follow the boat. So that's quite an aggressive turn there. Again, look, looking very good. So same thing again, rudder straight. And then when I want to bear away, I just dropped a little bit of main sheet there. You might have seen my hand move down. And then I'm just letting the boat come slightly on top so I can turn to the right. There we go. Does that make sense to everyone? Sorry, that was a little bit of a, a tricky video to illustrate that. But does that make sense to everyone in terms of, of using your heel angle to steer, particularly on the downwind? Going to assume everyone got that so um does anyone have any any more any questions on on downwind at all for any uh, any subject any area of downwind i suppose just a bit the same of, of upwind at what point would you look to put in a jibe uh when you're talking about sort of waves and, and trying to time that that, mm -hmm. that jibe yeah. yeah good great question yeah, I'll just I'll just let this play through because there's there's a jibe right in the middle here. I would say try and jibe when there's the least amount of load on your sail. So I jibe here when my boat is at full speed. So the sail actually moves across quite gently. And uh, the same actually applies to when it's really windy as well. Try and jibe when your boat is at full speed because you might have 20 knots of wind behind you. But if you're doing 10 knots down a wave, suddenly you're only jibing in 10 knots of breeze. So um, my, my big suggestion for when to jibe would be to jibe when you're at, at max speed, when you're surfing on a wave, because your boat's really stable, because when you're planing, you're quite stable and there's less load in your rig. Um, cool. Any any more questions on on downwind? On Saturday at X, the, the wind picked up the waves. Quite a number of boats broke when they were on the run. So, any answer to prevent that happening? Okay. So, uh, so which direction did they go? Did they did they go into leeward or into windward? Hello? Okay, sorry. I just someone asked me a question about uh, broaching on the downwind. Who who was that? Well, Stuart, I um I lost the, the audio for a second. Yeah, I would say typically they went to Lourdes. 
Okay. Um, the problem with that is, is um, it's very easy to try and sit in the middle of your boat and try and keep your boat dead flat when you're sailing downwind in windy conditions. The problem is when you're in a single sail boat, all of your sail is on one side. So if you keep your boat absolutely upright, all of your sails to the to the to the left. So if you get hit by a gust of wind, it's very easy for it to spin that way, if that makes sense. So if you just put your weight on the windward side, so you're putting on a very, very small amount of heel angle, your sail's quite tall. So you're bringing the center of your of effort of your sail over the center of your hull, everything's in balance. The problem occurs when you've got this sail off to one side and then you heel a little bit this way, suddenly all of your sails off, off to one side and your boat spins the other way. As soon as it starts spinning, um, it starts to heal more. The more it heals, then your boom catches in the water, which sheets you in, which heals you over more. So it's just a vicious cycle. So um, I'd say if, if you constantly have the, the trouble that you tend to broach to leeward going downwind, just bring the boat a little bit more on top of you, a bit more upright, because it's actually more balanced. So the, sort of the litmus test for is, is, your, is your trim side to side correct is if you let go you don't have to fully let go of your rudder but just let go of the grip on your rudder and see if the boat wants to carry on in a straight line if it's constantly wanting to to luff up and uh, spin into a brooch pull it on top of you a little bit more and if it's constantly trying to bear away underneath of you bring it a little bit flatter Um, the same applies for light winds. So um, if your boat's constantly trying to turn one way or the other, you need, you need to change your heel angle. So if, if the boat's too far on top of you, it'll be trying to bear away all the time. If it's, if it's too far away from you, too far heel to leeward, it'll be trying to luff up. Cool. So the answer is not to... Off in the first place, but to keep the, the boat balanced before the, the incident starts to occur. Yeah, yeah. Thank so you. yeah, first of all, make make sure it's not healing to leeward because that's what leads to um, that's what leads to the leeward broach, and sail angles because often when the boat gets really unstable, it's because your sails like this, the wind's just hitting your sail directly from behind and it doesn't know which way to go. So the wind's hitting the sail and sometimes it goes off this way. Sometimes it goes off in this direction. Whereas if you sail an angle and it's constantly flowing in the same direction, it's much more predictable. Whereas if you just put your sail up directly to the wind and sail a direct run, that's when it becomes very unstable because the wind's switching around. Whereas if you're always sailing by the lee or always sailing on a deep reach, it's much more predictable and uh, you'll be able to work out what's, what's happening. The boat will tell you what's happening. But uh, yeah, thanks for that. That's a really, really good question. So, so just, just to build on that a little bit, the, the, the problem <clears throat> that I always experience it, when you get the, uh, the choppy weather sort of in, in high winds, which I sail in the sound at most of the time, so that's pretty much what we get, is that I find that going downwind at a fairly deep angle, it's the waves that, uh, move my boat uh, lured and uh, on top of me so I'm constantly steering to keep the boat under the rig and I tend to get into this fairly sort of vicious uh, the boat moves me and I move the rudder and mm. I get moved again so I'm, I'm constantly um, fighting to keep the rig above the boat if that makes yeah. sense so it's the yeah. waves that seem to unbalance me and move me around is there any sort of tricks and techniques to avoid that um, I'd say to a certain extent, just let the um, let the boat move a little bit on the waves. Don't try and constantly correct it because it's very easy to overcorrect and then sort of start the cycle rolling. You just have to accept the fact that your boat is going to swing around a little bit in the waves. And I'd say almost just let the rudder follow the boat to a certain extent because downwind a single sail boat is actually quite good at finding the correct angle for itself. 
So um, if you're if you're sailing on a reach with your sail too far out, your boat will be trying to pull on top of you, which actually then brings it down to the correct angle. Whereas if you're on a reach and your sail's too far in, your boat will be trying to luff itself up to what its correct angle is. So I'd actually say don't try and correct too much. Let the boat try and find its own angle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then just and then just think about your sheeting. So if you know if your boat's constantly trying to luff up, your sheet's too tight. If it's constantly trying to roll on top of you and bear away, your sheet's too loose. Yeah. So I'll let you note that down. And then finally, I was just going to um, have a little chat about um, about gate starts. So um, little illustration I drew on a on a gate starts um, on the blackboard earlier on. Very simple um, diagram. So here's the the lead, but sorry, not the lead, but it's the gate boat, isn't it, coming across? Or the rabbit, as soon as we call it a rabbit start, when we start a lot of training exercises, and you're trying to duck yourself down and go underneath. So the biggest problems I tend to see on gate starts are people missing the gate, missing the missing the gate boat. So you have to imagine that there's a line directly across the wind from where that that boat is and if at any point you find yourself below that line you're going to be in trouble because even if you are sailing at full speed from say this point here below the line if you even if you sailed at full speed upwind and that boat still sailed at full speed upwind on close hauled you'd still only just cross behind so if you're below this line you're going to miss the boat you're going to miss the start. So make sure you're not below this imaginary line, which continually moves forwards as this boat moves forwards. And um, again, the easy thing to do is think I'm, I'm on this line. When this line reaches me here, sat in my boat, I'll start sailing. But uh, it, you have to remember that your boat actually takes some time to accelerate. So if you're below this line and you're not moving, it, it's already too late. So you've got to make sure you're above, well above that line. And um, it's it's all about time and distance, really. So um, again, another really good thing to go and practice if you've got some other friendly supernova sailors at your club is to um, practice what this looks like um, on the water so you can visualize it. So get someone to luff up, oh, sorry, round a lured mark and then to sail on port and you practice how long it takes you from being stationary in this sort of position to get yourself up to speed and then duck behind them. Because it's something that I can tell you what to do, but you need to go and practice it because it's a bit of a, an unusual skill that you don't really use in, um, in most other sailing unless you do gate starts as a regular thing. So go and practice it. Get someone to come around a leeward mark or to sail across in front of you on um, on starboard and then sorry on port and then duck up below below them. So uh, yeah, that's number one tip. Don't be too far back because if you're too far back, you'll never make it. Number two is if you're in the middle position here and you see this boat start to sail to, on a reach towards the, the gate boat to duck behind them to start, make sure you don't follow them straight away because if your bow is right behind this boat and you go behind the gate boat together, you'll have no leeward gap. There'll be no, very little leeward gap between you and this boat below you. So it'll be very easy for them to pinch you out so a little tip is when this boat starts moving, just wait for the count of two or three seconds before you start moving as well. And that'll give you a boat length gap, which once you've gone around the back of this gate boat, will make so much will make your life so much easier. 
So for future reference, if once everyone suddenly starts moving and if you're above this line, so it's not urgent that you need to start, give a little gap before you start. Yeah. Other than that, it's just like when you go around the back of the um, back of the gate boat, it'd be just like rounding up from a reach onto an upwind. So make sure most of your controls are set, ready to go, because the first few boat lengths of sailing after you've gone behind the gate boat are going to be the most critical. Because if you're slow there and you're not, um, and you're trying to adjust your controls, for example, you're not sailing at full speed, other boats around you will uh, will get ahead of you and they'll give you dirty wind and then you'll basically be behind the whole fleet. Whereas if you um, lose concentration or you're not, um, if, or you sail a bit slowly towards the end of the race, you might lose one or two boat lengths. Whereas when you've ducked behind this boat, if you're sailing slow for even a short time, you're basically putting yourself behind the whole fleet. So uh, look at it that way. The most important time to hike and go for max speed is just after the start because that's when you want to be um, getting ahead of everyone because everyone's so close together. Um, so do we have any any questions on uh, on gate starts? So the decision on to go early or to go late? I guess that's Dependent on the wind curve, is it as they go up the, as they go yeah. across the line? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a good decision as well. So I think part of it could be working out whether you think you're faster or slower than the gate boat, because if you think you're faster than them, you want to start early, because in a big fleet, you know, there's over a hundred boats for example, at, at the Supernova Nationals, if you've got to wait for that boat to sail and cross 100 boat lengths, and you could have been sailing faster than them for that whole time, you're essentially um, gaining on all the boats that haven't started yet, if that makes sense. So, so just for example, if um, over two minutes of sailing time, just for example, you reckon you're 30 seconds faster than the gate boat and you start um, very, very early and they sail for two minutes time crossing the fleet and other boats are starting. By the time the last boats are starting, you could be 30 seconds ahead of them. I know that's um, sort of a big, a big estimate, but um, does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, I must admit, I never thought about it that way before. Yeah, whereas if you reckon you're slower than the gate boat, wait for longer because you know if they've been sailing for three minutes and you you could have lost time over that three minutes um why not delay your start and start later on so you're spend you're spending less time losing time if that makes sense yeah so uh, that's that's a good decision about whether to go early or to go late um and then after that the decision um, comes down to whether uh, which side of the course you think is going to be favoured. So that becomes a whole a whole load of other information about strategy, about when you start thinking about is the wind going to go left or is the wind going to go right or is there some land on one side of the course because that can make a big difference to the wind. So um, it's then about then it's just like a normal start where you decide you know, do I want to be on the left hand side of the fleet or the right hand side of the fleet, which is just like a normal line start. The only difference with the gate start is um, do you reckon you're faster or slower than the gate boat? Cool. Any more any more on gate starts? There we go. And just um, any questions in general. So I'll close that down. And I'll just say to everyone, just before we end, have you got any questions on 
on any area of sailing. It doesn't have to be to do with um, with sea sailing. Just uh, shout them out, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Either everyone is uh, ready for the nationals, Alistair, or uh, or maybe just not quite sure where to go with that. But um, if no one's got any questions, I'd just again like to reiterate, you know, thanks a lot from for the whole class, you know, taking your time to uh, to put this on, Alistair. You know, really, really appreciate it. Um, and it's been uh, I've certainly, you know, uh, on a personal level, found it really, really useful to go through through this. So, um, yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, you're all very welcome. It's something, you know, I'm I'm very glad to do. You know, I love watching, talking about sailing and getting, helping people get better at sailing. So, you know, it's, if someone's been struggling with someone, something and I can help you improve at that, you know, I love doing that. So, um, yeah, if you haven't got any, can't think of any questions now, but you can think of some in the future, um, you can find, I have a, a, a page on Facebook called Alistair Goodwin coaching so if you've got any questions you can just send me a message on on there and um again i'll do my best to try and give you a um a decent answer but um other than that i think that's all from me so um hope you enjoy the rest of your week um hope you're able to get sailing at the weekend and um see you all at the nationals awesome thanks Alison. thank you very much very interesting Excellent. Thanks, guys. Hey.